Uh, this information will be recorded, so thank you for joining us on our monthly IIBA certification chat. At any point through this chat, if you have a question, you have a couple options. One is you can put your question in the question box. So you should have access to the question box. Or if there's not that many of you, if you want to raise your hand, and then I can certainly call on you. Uh, and we can answer your questions that way. Looks like we have a few more people signing in. So welcome everybody to the certification chat. So I am Susan Heidorn. I am the Director of Business Solutions at Watermark Learning. I also am Product Director of all the certification products, the IIBA certification products, and the Course Director for our prep courses. We have a CBAP prep course, CCBA, ECBA, which are normal certifications, and then we also have AAC, which we'll talk about in a little bit, which is our Agile certification. So just to note upcoming events, uh, the next Q&A session around IABA certification is November 1st at 11 o'clock. We usually have it the first Friday of every month. The next uh, classes, if you're interested in getting your certification, is that we have a CBAP CCBA starting November 18th. These are virtual classes, so you can be anywhere in the world and take these classes. So check out our website. We have another one starting December 16th. Normally they go four days in a row, so you have four full days of communication. Uh, ECBA is uh, three days, and then we also have in case those days don't work for you, a option of any time learning in which you have a recorded session of the actual class. So those are your options. I uh, just want to let you know, be aware of them. And you will, all, all attendees will receive a copy of these slides, so you will have them for later. So let's kind of get started here. I just want to minimize here. So we're going to talk about the three main certifications first, and then we'll talk about towards the end, we'll talk about the two additional certifications, specialty certifications. So these are the three uh, main certifications IIB offers, ECBA, CCBA, and CBAP. So the target audience for ECBA are really people who are new to the profession, people who are just entering. So they may be uh, college students, uh, new graduates. They may be somebody who's um, moving into a business analyst position. Uh, sometimes we get people from sales who want, who want to go into being a business analyst or maybe a developer. So they can kind of come from any walk of life and they said, hey, this is kind of an interesting profession, I wanna know more about it. For ECBA, the nice thing is because it is entry level, there's no work experience, no knowledge needed. You do need 21 hours of professional development. In, in essence, if you take a class or at any point in time, uh, then you can get your 21 hours. It doesn't have to be a certification class, it could be another class on, on business analysis. Uh, we have references. There are no references needed for ECBA. Everybody signs this code of conduct. And this is really just a one hour exam, very knowledge based, very simple, basically kind of understanding your terms, basic terms, basic uh, concepts, if you will. So it's very knowledge based, only 50 questions and you got an hour to do that. It is online, it's proctored by PSI who do online proctoring. So you can do that in at your home, at work, or anywhere else that you happen to be. CCBA is that mid-level. And so this is for developing BAs who have some experience being a BA. Uh, they may want to just have a certification that says, hey, I, I kind of know what I'm talking about. Uh, they could be hybrid BAs. A lot of times, you know, you wear many hats. So a lot of us BAs, sometimes we wear a PM hat or a QA hat or a designer hat. Um, product owners and managers who may be unfamiliar with, um, well, not unfamiliar, but uh, who want more familiarity with having kind of best pr 
and I wouldn't say best practices, but common practices of BA and non-BA consultants. Here you need 3,750 hours in the last seven years. Uh, IIBA does not give you a reduction in hours for any college education like PMI does. So you do need the full hours. So this one needs 3,750 hours in the last seven years. A minimum of 900 hours in either two knowledge areas. Now, just an FYI, there are six knowledge areas. Just in case you wanted to know, we'll talk about what those knowledge areas are in a bit. But we have uh, six of them. So this is that I need, if I, out of those six, I either need 900 hours of experience in two of those, or 500 hours in four of those knowledge areas. Once again, you need 21 hour credit hours for professional development. It does have to be uh, a formal, more of a formal class with an instructor over the last four years. You do need two references. Your references only get checked if you are audited, but you still need to provide those two references. And a reference can be a, another CBAP or it could be your professional um, manager who gives you your performance review. So it can, or if you are a consultant, it could be a client. And yes, you have to do this code of conduct. CCBA is a little bit different. It's not knowledge based, it's more situational based. They call it scenario based exams. So they give you a little scenario two to four sentences. If you know you, you are a BA and here's the situation, what would you do? Some things like that. So more, more trying to figure out how to practice being a BA. So they're more practical questions. And so they're multiple choice. The nice thing is they're all multiple choice. You get four, four multiple choice options, A, B, C, and D. At least you get 25% of them, 25% chance of getting incorrect. <laughs> Uh, and in CCBA, they have 130 questions. You do have to go to a Prometric site to take that exam, and you have three hours to do it. So there's some, you know, like I said, little scenario-based questions, still multiple choice, and it's more about applicability. And there are some knowledge-based questions as well, but not as many as you would do in the ECBA. CBAP. Uh, is the, I would say, senior BA. So you could be a, a CCBA, you could be a seasoned BA, a trainer, consultant. Now, just an FYI, you notice that there's three certifications we've been talking about. You do not have to get them all or in order. So I'm a CBAP, I am not a CCBA or ECBA. Uh, some people think that you have to be ECBA first, CCBA, and then CBAP. No, you don't. It just depends on your hours of experience. Maybe you want to sit for ECBA when you first get in the profession, and then maybe you want to move up to CCBA or CBAP. You don't have. You can do one. You can do the other. You don't have to even do both. Minimum, though, you need more hours. You need 7,500 hours in the last 10 years. And you need a minimum of 900 hours of experience in each of the four knowledge areas. Remember, there's six. So four, you have to have at least 900 hours. You need a little bit more professional development time in this, and it's 35 hours in the last four years. So if you take any of our certification classes, that automatically comes with your professional development hours. So our CBAP and our CCBA actually give you 35 credit hours. So it, uh, it's even, you know, CCBA only needs 21, but they still get 35 also. You do get 21 in the ECBA that we have. So we have some classes. So if you choose to take our certification classes, those hours are built in. If you uh, don't take one, which you don't have to, then you're gonna have to take some other BA class and, and count those hours up because you'll have to have them before you can sit for the exam. Again, two references. Yes to the sign of code of conduct. Now the CCBA or the CBAC questions are different than CCBA. So it is a case study. Uh, based exam. So you have a case study that can be a number of paragraphs long, two, three paragraphs long. And then each of those can have some scenario-based questions. So I might have a whole situation for a case study 
then each case study can have three, four questions around it. And so then you have to read your scenario-based question, look at all the answers, and then go back up to the case study to see if you can uh, uh, deduce the answer. There are multiple choice still, A, B, C, D. Uh, there's only 120 questions. Uh, they have it a little less than CBAP, and I think one of the reasons they do is case studies are a lot longer to absorb. So you have to read this whole case study and there are some scrolling, scrolling involved. So that always takes time, scrolling involved. And then you read the question, read all the answers, go back up to this, the case study. So it just takes a little bit longer. And because of that, you get 3.5 hours, three and a half hours of time to be able to take the exam. And once again, you would have to go to a Prometric site to take that exam. So that are the, are the basic ones. We'll talk about, again, the specialty ones a little bit later in our session. But up to then, up to now, um, any questions of what I just covered? You can either raise your hand or put your question in the question box. All right, so I am also going to do a little survey, mini survey here. So this will be practicing with your hands. How many of you on this call, just out of curiosity, are planning to sit for the ECBA? Raise your hand. Anybody ECBA? Okay, we have a couple of you. Great, thank you. Thank you for raising your hand. How about CCBA? How many of you are looking for CCBA or thinking about it? All right, and again, how about CBAP? All of those rest of you are CBAP? All right, excellent. Thank you for doing that. I'm just kind of trying to focus, focus my time here on where people are thinking about getting their certification. And once again, you will get you will get copies of this. So, uh, Daryl, did you have your hand up for CBAP or did you have your hand up for a question? Okay, he must have had it for CBAP. Okay, so moving on here. This is the exam blueprint, the most important thing you need to know. So as you can see, um, we have not, the knowledge areas actually are the ones in red. So this red circle. So we said we had six knowledge areas. We have business analysis, planning and monitoring, elicitation and collaboration, requirements, life cycle management, strategy analysis, requirements analysis and design definition and solution evaluation. These are each separate chapters in the BOC. Now the BOC also has additional chapters. So that those additional chapters is we have a chapter one, which is business analysis in the BA profession. It just kind of covers some core elements. Then um, underlying competencies is another separate chapter chapter nine, I believe. And there are some information you need to know there. And then there's a chapter just on concepts and terminology. This kind of grounds us before we get into the knowledge areas. It is a chap separate chapter, again, with terminology and concepts being its main focus. Like what types of requirements are there? Uh, what do you mean by a domain SME? What do you mean by enterprise versus organization? So those are some in the key concepts. And then we have techniques. We have a whole chapter, uh, chapter 10 actually, of techniques. There are 50, count them, 50 techniques. So a lot. Now here's the thing that I don't know that <laughs> IIBA kind of um, makes it a little bit difficult to understand. So for, you can see at level one, my ECBA participants, you can see how what the percentage and the number of questions are for each area, right? So they, they have a few about the profession. You might get a question around, what is the definition of a business analyst? Or they give you a definition and said, what is the, this a definition of? You know, I mean, it, it, pretty self-explanatory. As, as well as the key concepts, maybe 
Is this a is this the a definition of requirement or is it a definition of design? Or, you know, so what what are we looking at? And then they might have some questions around the purpose of each technique. It's going to be pretty high level. And then just maybe knowing some of the tasks in each of these knowledge areas. So each knowledge area has tasks. They have about five tasks. Strategy analysis only has four, but RAD has six. So they kind of compensate. So average out is five. So you have to know a little bit about each and some of the key concepts in each. But then you look at CCBA and CBAP and they go, wow, I don't have to know any of this. Even though this says NA, I want to make sure you all understand, yes, you still need to know that. So for instance, they have taken these concepts that from, from these, you know, the underlying competencies concepts, and they have put them into questions around the knowledge areas. So for CCBA and CBAP, there are a lot of technique questions. Even though it says NA here, there are a ton of technique questions. You need to know them inside and out. And what they've done is they've taken that technique and maybe that technique was a, around elicitation. Maybe we were talking about prototyping, which is an elicitation technique, okay? So they've taken that technique and said, you know what, we're going to add that technique to one of the 30 questions here. So I want to, to ensure, because sometimes we get people go, well, you know, IIBA says there's no technique questions. That is not true. The tons of technique questions. You really need to know your techniques because there's more technique questions, I think, than anything within there, but they build it into the knowledge areas. Now, some of the underlying competencies, concepts, um, you won't necessarily be tested on. You're, as a CCBA and CBAP, you're not going to be asked, what is the definition of a business analyst? Or what is business analysis? You know, is it A, B, C, or D? However, unless you understand the way they're using those terms, you could get a question incorrect. So when I'm teaching my CCBA and CBAP students, I always said, know the terms anyway. You know, know what IIBA says these terms are. So if you if you get a question around the enterprise, you know how it, they take an enterprise and make a different definition than an organization, or that you know what the a difference between implementation SME and a domain SME is because they're talking about them within the case study or within the question. So it's not to memorize the con competencies, concepts, and business analysis profession, but getting to understand the nomenclature, the terminology that they use, but techniques you need to know inside and out. And this is this will kind of help you study this because it's like, okay, we got 18 questions, which could be also techniques that are used in B business analysis, planning, monitoring. We've got 21 here. So this kind of gives you a feel for where you're going to need to apply your study. Quite a few in requirements analysis and design. Wow, that would be a big place to study. So this kind of helps you kind of figure out where do you need to go as far as when you're when you're studying for the exam? Any any questions? Uh, is it Kartik? Rao? Do you have a question? You had you had your hand up. Uh, the total number of questions don't add up. One twenty to one forty nine for CBAP. Yeah, there's, there's, there, because they only give us percentages, we're only estimating the number of questions. They okay. won't be perfect. They, wow. they could work uh, a little bit. I hope a okay, that environment would best. Yeah. You bet. All right. Um, oh, does any somebody else? I just accidentally put them all down. Did anybody else have a question? Uh, let me unmute you, Jean. Go ahead. Yes. Can you hear me? I Hello? can. Yes. Thank you. Oh, okay. Yes. Go ahead. I think you just muted yourself, Jean. Me. Okay. Good. Uh, can you hear me now? Can yes. Can you hear me now? Okay. Excellent. Thank you. Uh, my question is about the application form. Uh, assuming that I 
I plan to go first with the ECBA, but I'm looking forward at the end of the day to go for the CBAP. Assuming the application form of the CBAP, I presume they will ask us about experience, just like when we go for a PMP. Yeah. Uh, can we presume that the percentage, like for example, CBAP is 14% for BAPM, um, how can we expect, is there any volume of hours, number of hours that is expected per knowledge area or per tasks or something like this? Yeah, those were the hours that we had on the on the previous slide. So let me just kind of move up there. So these were the hours you need in each of those knowledge areas. So 900 hours in each of the two, if you're going for CCBA, 500 yes. in each of the four or 900 for four if you're doing CBAP. So that would be these knowledge areas. But I mean like and if I put, for example, if I select, for example, elicitation and collaboration, I would have to mm -hmm. uh, describe uh, the amount of work done representing 900 hours. And uh, I mean, what I try to say here is, yes. how do you yes. enter, how do you prove, I mean, uh, 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 how do you describe these 900 hours? Do you describe the 900 yeah. hours through the different tasks that are yes, in elicitation yes, and collaboration? Well, you would, absolutely. And what we do is, is if you go to our website, we also have a form that you can complete that will help you add up those hours. But yes, oftentimes by task. So in elicitation and collaboration, some of the tasks are prepare for elicitation, conduct elicitation, mm -hmm. and confirm so maybe i have i was working on a project and i was doing a lot of interviews maybe i was doing some workshops so i maybe i spent uh, 50 hours preparing maybe i spent 20 hours conducting and then i spent 30 hours confirming to see if my information was correct mm. and those get all added up per project and then you can see how many hours you have in each area so that you know do i have enough hours for ccba or do i have enough hours for CBAP? Okay, and is there any uh, kind of uh, how to say that uh, a percentage? Not not a percentage per se, but I mean some hours that are, for example, preparation is in my case obviously it takes time uh, unless I yes. have done it already twenty times. Uh, right. So is there is there some sort of how to say that? For example, in PMP, I, I've been PMP. I'm, I'm PMP beside. Uh, uh -huh. It would be abnormal. It would be abnormal to have a volume of hours which is large in, for example, uh, the, the the first uh, uh, group yeah, of yeah, process yeah. which is uh, initiating, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. and and a small volume of hours in executing. For example, that that would be completely abnormal. Uh, mm -hmm. Uh, is there the same kind of uh, thing in the CBAP application form? Like if no. I have a high volume of hours in elicitation and collaboration, but small volume of hours in strategy analysis or solution evaluation, would it be, uh, let's say, uh, eliminating my form if I lack of experience in strategy analysis or solution evaluation, for example? Yeah, I mean, these are, these are the minimum. So you would actually have to have, if you do CCBA, 900 hours in two or 500 hours in each. You do have to have the certain hours, but it it's not by task. So elicitation, you could spend a lot of time on prepping, a little less time in conducting, but that would still all add up to being under elicitation. There are no phases. It's just a, a bucket of, of areas of things that you do as a business analyst. So, so if I have, for example, a thousand hours in elicitation and so on, but I have only, I'm exaggerating on purpose, but if I have mm -hmm. only like 50 hours on uh, strategy analysis, for example, that is not eliminating? Nope. Okay. Nope. You have to have 900 hours if you're going for CBAP yeah. in all four. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Good. Thanks. Thank you. You bet. You yeah, sure. Certainly. Any other questions before we move on? Good questions, thank you. All right, so there is, if you go to the Watermark website, there is a template that even, maybe you don't wanna sit for the CCBA or CBAP tomorrow, 
but it will help you capture hours. For me, I was a consultant and I always had to capture my hours, so it was a little easier for me. But if you think about, you got seven years or 10 years to look at, oh gee, what did I do? You know, sometimes I don't know what I ate for breakfast. So <laughs> it's like, what did I do five years ago on this project? How many hours did I spend? So I, one, encourage people, if you're thinking about it in a couple of years, st start filling out the application now. Or if you feel like you're going, to, you're ready for the application, fill, fill out this form. Again, it's free on the Watermark website. Just download it. It helps you capture that information so that when you're ready to put it into the system, that you already have everything you need right there. So you got to make sure that you have the minimum hours in each knowledge area. Again, 904 of them out of the six. Uh, it, as you do your application, they have two types of pricing. They have one as a IIBA me member and another as a non-IBA member. Of course, the non-IBA member, pay, pay, you have to pay more, right? But it behooves you to become a member to save some money. And what it what it actually does, if you think about the price of the membership and the discounted price of your application actually equals to your non-member price. So I figure you might as well become a member because then you get some of that member benefits like articles and white papers and, and uh, information on conferences coming up and things like that that are kind of helpful for a BA to know so I always encourage people, you know, you're paying the same price as a non-member, you might as well pay the price to become a member and then get the discounted price for your application. Here's another thing to remember. Don't stress out over the exact hours or dates. Because like I said, who's, who remembers <laughs> a, year, a year ago, let, let alone 10 years ago? And I, I don't think anybody's going to come and say, you know what, Susan, uh, you started that project on December 1st, but you put that you started the project on November 28th. I mean, who, who's going to prove you wrong? No, nobody can do that, right? Because we're just, we're trying to do the best we can ethically and honestly about putting our hours in, but maybe we, we missed a couple days or something. I mean, you do, you do your best that you can. You, if you have to approximate your hours, it's like, well, you know, I was on project A for this time. I think I spent this many hours. You just do the best you can. So again, download our application sheet. That will help you because then that adds up some of those hours that you have in each of the knowledge areas. So I don't know if you can see it, but this is business analysis, planning, monitoring, and then you get uh, solution assessment and things like that. So this, this kind of helps you put them in the right order. So as you are going for your certification, excuse me a sec. <coughs> Sorry about that, I had a sneeze there. Um, the best thing you can, one of the good things you can do, sorry about that, is go check out IIBA.org. They have the latest and greatest, and believe me, they change things. So sometimes I'm talking about it and they go, oh, we really changed the application. It used to be you did the application and then you paid. Now you got to pay before you do the application. So, I mean, they, you know, there's times where, and they don't always let you know. They don't, we're a registered provider for IIBA. They don't even let us know that the changes were there. So sometimes they're just kind of surprising. So to make sure that you have the latest and the greatest, check out their website. Or, and if you have questions, you can email them at certification.iiba.org. Uh, but, you know, general information, there is a site you can go to for that certification. And then there's all the levels of certification. Uh, there's also Agile BA certification. We're going to talk about that in a little bit, that specialty out there. And their newest one that just came out this year, Agile, Agile certification came out last year, but data analytics came out this year. So they're, they're starting to do some specialty um, certifications. Uh, again, uh, check out, here's some resources. We have classes, we have study materials, we have a study guide for CBAP, CCBA, we have uh, flashcards, we have study tables, we have uh, wonderful materials, so take a look at them to help you study. Our goal is to make you successful. 
And again, you can go to our site and look look under the various products and things like that. Um, again, download, it, it is free. You do have to sign in to uh, Watermark Learning. It's free though, you sign in and you have access not only to the application worksheet, but you have access to a lot of BA templates. So if you're just starting out or you're even a senior uh, BA and you're looking for some templates, take a look on that because there's there's quite a few of templates. And feel free to take that those templates, change it, make it your own. It's just that you don't have to start from scratch. Also, uh, of course, we have free recorded webinars. Our chats are all recorded. We have uh, also some webinars. You can also get um, PDUs and CDUs for those webinars. So that's a good way to get additional credit hours because once you're a CCBA or CBAP, you have 60 credit hours to get in three years to keep it up because you don't want to take the exam again. Believe me, you do not want to take that exam again. So you want to keep it up. Usually I try and get about 20 each each year so that I can kind of pace myself and I'm not looking at six, getting 60 credit hours in in the last two months. So um, tips, uh, study well. Most people who take the CBAP and CCBA exam, I would say study for about three months. Now, uh, some people's lives are a little bit different than others. Uh, some people can only study on the weekends. So I would say the average students that we have coming through our classes study three to six months and then take it. Now we've had some people go to the end of the end of their time period, but uh, generally that's that's not true. You have a year from your application date to take the exam, but I would suggest not waiting until the last minute. Get a copy of the BA box. Now, as a member, you can download it for free. That's another value of that membership. Uh, otherwise, you can buy it on Amazon or anywhere else uh, if, you, if you want the hard copy. What I did is I downloaded <coughs> a copy and then just printed it out myself to be able to read. So it's, but behoove you though to read it at least once. I usually suggest at least twice, <coughs> once to go through it the first time and then the second time to just study um, knowledge area by knowledge area. They say study one chapter at a time. I talk about, um, you know, the knowledge areas. So study one knowledge area at a time, then do some practice drills. We also have, <coughs> excuse me, I'm sorry, I'm just covering over from a cold. So I still have that little nagging cough. So I apologize there. So if you do a knowledge area, let's say you did business analysis, planning and monitoring, you go through the box, Maybe you have our study guide, you read through that, and then you take some practice exams. So we have an online simulation practice exam that has over 1,100 questions to help you prep. ECBA has over 400. It's just, it's a smaller exam, so we didn't need as many questions. If your exam scores, because they can score it, there's a couple <coughs> in the simu uh, uh, simulation questions, you have a drill, which just mix up the questions, you can do questions by knowledge area, or you can do an exam sim. <clears throat> and if you're doing an exam sim, you kind of want to aim for 80%. So if you're around 75, 80% on the questions, correct, you're probably pretty ready for the exam itself. So then um, make sure you know the topics, <coughs> the technology, or topics, concepts, Let's see, I think uh, get plenty of rest, <coughs> do a brain dump, and uh, you have the opportunity to skip over difficult questions. So both systems, whether you're doing the PSI or, <coughs> or the Prometric, both give you options to skip over difficult questions and come back to them. That way you don't have to sit there and kind of go, okay, worry about the time. Just skip the question, go through the rest of the questions, answer those, you can always come back at the end. 
retaking the exam. It used to ha have to wait three months before you could take it again. Now you can take it up to three times in a one year period. So from the time your application is approved, you got one year to take the exams. And now there's no wait times. <clears throat> if you p took the exam on Thursday and you didn't pass, you want to take it to on Friday again, you can. I would suggest not. I would suggest you studying between them, but you do have that option. And recertification. Like I said, you have to have 60. They're called credit development units. Certified, uh, I think, CDUs. I don't know. I'll call them CDUs for so long. I forgot what it stands for. But anyway, you need 60 of them within three years to maintain your CCBA and CBAP certification. So that um, is something that you want to keep on once you pass the exam. So I have some questions here that I'm going to stop and go through. Um, questions about ECBA prep. Should we expect it at 100 hours to study? Well, I, would, I wouldn't say. I would say um, for ECBA, you generally, I, t I tell people that you can take it in the first month. So we have an ECBA ex um, practice exam. We have uh, ECBA class. Again, um, and flashcards, if you know the terminologies and understand the key concepts, I would say that you don't need that many hours, depending on how long it takes you to um, memorize, because it's kind of a memorized knowledge test. So um, usually people, I suggest taking it, <clears throat> once you take take a class or prep, take it in about a month, because you don't, you don't need that much time to study for it. Let's see. Oh, or more instead, it's based on theory. Well, the BA BAC, uh, Business Analysis Body and Knowledge BAC, is actually based on real people's experiences, real BAs. So it's not actually theoretical, which is kind of the nice thing about it. It really is based on, on BAs who have been in the profession for a long time. What do they do? And so everything that is in the BAC is, is, is true to somebody's life. Somebody's done it. Now, you in your organization may have not done it, or you may have called it for a different term or, you know, some other things like that. But basically, all the stuff in the BAC is somebody's real life. Somebody, somebody's done that. Somebody's used that technique. Somebody's done that task. They might have called it something different. A lot of times people call stakeholder requirements business requirements in their world. So it's, it is getting used to the terminology, but it isn't based on theory. Um, how long is ECBA valid since we don't have any 60 CDUs? Uh, forever. Once you're an ECBA, you're an ECBA. Yay! <laughs> so, so you can take that designation as long as you want. <clears throat> um, Brenda asks, what do you mean by the brain dump? In our classes, we give... <clears throat> a lot of uh, acronyms and mnemonics to help you remember uh, a list of lists used to be really um, helpful then they changed the test and maybe it's it's not quite as much but like task so one of our ta elicitation collaboration has five tasks we use a mnemonic to say we, we use a mnemonic to tell them um, what are those five tasks. So we say P, C to the four, you know, like politically correct. So P stands for prepare. And then the first C, because there's four C's, conduct and conduct elicitation, confirm elicitation results, and then communicate and collaborate with stakeholders. So we, so we give you those um, to kind of help you remember those tasks. So we give you tasks, uh, mnemonics and acronyms around task for each of the knowledge areas so that if you're thinking about answering a question and it's like, okay, we're in elicitation. What do I do in elicitation? Oh, that's right. I prepare, conduct, and confirm. So I got to make sure maybe I answer the question going, okay, what they asked me what my next step was because I just did a workshop. I'd say my next step was to make sure that I wrote things down and I confirmed it with the stakeholders to make sure that that information is correct. 
So sometimes we've suggested people to do a brain dump. Uh, you, <clears throat> in Prometric, you're given either a piece of paper or a little whiteboard you can mark up. And it just kind of says, put, put the, you know, quickly put the acronyms down for each of the knowledge areas and tasks so that when you have to refer to it and you're not in the anxiety of the test that you can remember them better. So that's the kind of the brain dump. Um, ECBA and retaking, just in case uh, they don't pass. I believe so. Um, your best bet is to check IABA, but I, be but I believe you can retake that probably up to the same thing, up to three times per year. So I think those were some of the wonderful questions you asked. Thank you so much for those. Um, just moving on a little bit, um, and I certainly will will have time for some additional questions too. I just only have an hour with you and so much, so much to tell you. <laughs> so this is, this is their Agile Analysis Certification. This came out last year. There are no eligibility requirements for it, uh, but they recommend that you have some experience um, with Agile because otherwise some of the terms and some of the nuances will be very uh, difficult for you to understand without that. So it's recommended with for BAs that have at least two to five years agile related experience and or or any agile practitioner two to five years experience and so it is a certification i do have this certification also um it's not it's fairly i would say you need to study but it's it's not the daunting <laughs> dauntingness if i will of the cpap exam so remember, CBAP is three and a half hours. You have to go to Prometric site. You know, it's 120 questions. Uh, the specialty um, certifications are a little bit less. So the Agile only has 85 questions. It is scenario-based, much like the CCBA. So it'll give you a situation. You're a business analyst working on an Agile project. Um, and you, what technique would you use or what... A strategy horizon would you be in if you did this those were some of the types of questions we also have online questions for this as well as the study tables and flashcards multiple choice answers a b c and d it's two hours in length and just like ecba it, you use pc psi to take the exam so i took my exam at home so it was uh, delivered uh, um, by remote proctoring and these are kind of the domains in which you'd have to know. They have the agile mindset. What does it mean to be agile and, and how does the BA play within that space? And then kind of this, this different horizons. They took agile and divided into horizons like strategy horizons would be more about the envisioning and planning for an agile event. Uh, initiative would be a little bit lower, getting your user stories and your backlog prepped, and delivery would be actually doing your sprints if you did scrum. So again, 85 questions, two hours. It, it only took me an hour and a half. It took um, some other people I know two hours. One person I knew took one hour. So just depends. She really knew Agile really well too. So, so that's the Agile. Um, and then you have our latest and greatest. We do not have any resources on this yet. We plan to um, put them together, hopefully ne by next quarter next year. Uh, again, there's no eligibility, but it wants to recognize your ability to execute data analysis related to data analytics. And so we're finding in the business analysis world, maybe many of you are also involved into data analytics. It's, it's huge business intelligence part of it. And so it's only 75 questions, you still get two hours. But, and it does, doesn't does have where the Agile certification has an Agile extension. Okay, so it's an Agile extension to the BAC. So you think about, you have the BA BAC and then you have the Agile extension. You only need to read the Agile extension for the Agile test though. Um, and you do need to know a little bit about the BAC, but you can kind of miss a couple questions because there were a couple of questions that were in the BAC around techniques that weren't in the Agile extension. 
Anyway, in the data analytics, they only have white papers to be base your understanding about what they're talking about so that you can actually answer the questions. Uh, so again, that's new. Um, and so that's something that you can certainly take a look at. Um, and then we just have uh, our, our study guides, again, online simulation examples. Flat, we have flashcards. And you, you can just purchase what you want. You don't have to purchase any of them if you don't want. We have classes. And then we have the, have the Agile information just as well. So with that said, that was kind of whew, uh, a whirlwind. Uh, what other questions might anyone have for me that I can that I can help out? Something maybe that I that uh, I didn't cover or didn't ask. You can put it in the question box or you can raise your hand. All right, well, I guess no one has any questions. Again, this these slides will be available to you. And I wanna wish you all the best. Uh, at any point in time, if you have any questions, please contact Watermark Learning. You can do info at watermarklearning.com. We always respond. So if you think about a question uh, after this session is done, you go, oh, I forgot to ask Susan this. Uh, certainly just, just be in contact with us and we're gonna try and help you wherever we can. We want you to all be successful at passing your exams and we wanna be part of your world as you do that. Uh, there is one question here that came up. Um, how many times a year do you offer CBAP courses? I would, we offer our CBAP certification because they're um, a little bit more popular than ECBA, but we offer them once a month. We usually offer them during the day. Um, I think later on we might be looking at weekends and some evenings, depending on where you are, whether that will work or not, because if you're around the world, the evenings would be really late in the, in the evening for you. But yeah, we, we do offer those uh, frequently. So just check our website for the latest times. All right, well, thank you so much for being with me today. I wish you all the best. And again, please send us uh, your notes or questions and we'll be happy to help you out. So have a great rest of your day and a lovely weekend.